Modern Warfare 2 and the launch of the dubbed COD 2.0 has done a lot of things, for better or for worse depending on how you look at them, but in the midst of all of this change and adjustments to the game's fundamentals, the outlook on future updates and content distribution, and the attempted cohesive experience going forward, there's one big marketed item that we saw with Modern Warfare 2 that we only saw once and only once, despite it supposedly looking like the next big thing in weaponry and especially the cosmetic department. Weapon Vaults. Remember those? Well, today we've only seen a whopping total of, let me check my notes real quick, well, only one in the entirety of the offerings of Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and DMZ thus far. So, what's up with that? Are there more on the way? Today I want to discuss why we could have only seen one so far, when we may see more, and how we may see them. As we go along, drop your thoughts below. Are you hoping to see more Weapon Vaults? Why or why not? And if you're new to the channel, you'd like to stay up to date with all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and DMZ, considering that subscribe button, and finally check out G Fuel with code ESPRESSO for 20-30% to off your entire order. But for now, let's jump into it. So, what was interesting about about weapon vaults was firstly how little we knew about them for so long. I mean, when vaults were first announced, we didn't have anything actually describing what they were. So it created a lot of theories. One of the biggest ones was initially on the optimistic side of things that it was this theory that vaults would be the replacement for blueprints. That finally, after three years of seeing our blueprints completely altered by changing even just one singular attachment in some cases, they would have a system in place that would allow us to keep those designs on blueprints across all the weapons and no matter what attachments we put on them. Turns out that wasn't exactly of the cases, we ended up getting clarification from studio art director at Infinity Ward, Joel Emsley, who followed up back in June by saying, this is an extremely rare style of weapon blueprint category. More details to come. So stating that theory that we had was indeed incorrect and that we'd still see blueprints as they were and as they are now, but with this vault being a rare exception. With it fully being debuted and explained the day before COD Next, right before everything was revealed for multiplayer and all, that we first got the information on what it is as we know it now, a vault being something that gives all weapons and receivers under a platform, all the attachments and everything, that the weapon is fully unlocked even if you have zero minutes of playtime. Plus also that bonus then of every single attachment still having some sort of cohesive design in regard to the cosmetic or camo that is associated with that. And the only way to obtain this was, well, the vault edition, the one that we saw with the M4A1 and the entire M4 platform, which then included the 556 Icarus, FSS Hurricane, the M16, and the FTAC Recon along with the M4A1. So if that's the case and that's the only one we ever got, well, where do we go from here? Because it was something that, yes, was stated as extremely rare. Rare, but extremely rare to the degree that we're going on three months now of Modern Warfare 2 and we've still not seen another one introduced. Well, the rumor that I had heard around the time of COD Next seems to be holding up that these are going to be incredibly rare that we'd only see three to four to five in the entire year of Modern Warfare 2. But even right now, we're still not even at that point where we'd see one per season. So maybe it's like one every other season. But is that perhaps for the better that we don't see them just yet? Is this perhaps better that this giant feature that was said to be a cosmetic and sort of weapon revolution, is it better that we don't see them. The biggest issue that we had heard, especially around launch in the beta, and it was definitely valid, was that vaults would be pay to win, unlocking every single attachment for the gun immediately and for all the weapons of that platform. So essentially, you could have one to four or five weapons fully unlocked and ready to go with zero game time. We saw in the beta when the vault edition pre-orders had access to the M4 vault, that they had an immediate leg up on their opponents that didn't necessarily have that vault. Same thing at launch. So if we were to see another one shortly after, it'd still be the same. Now, that might be different now because I'd wager that a lot of you watching this video now, statistically speaking, you're in the more hardcore player base because you're here seeking out additional media on COD. The casual base, the ones that pick up their controllers a couple hours a week, they don't go out of their way. They just pick up the controller, play the game, and they're done with it, go back to their lives. But I'd wager that most of you watching this video here are likely well progressed through your weapon leveling, whether completely done with every single weapon ranked up, maybe even having the max camo of Orion, or just having a large number of them ranked up and you're just playing around casually. What is nice is that now, that may be a non-issue. The way that I see vaults going into the future is one of two different ways. Number one, either a vault for all new weapons in a season, or two, a retroactive vault for a platform like the Castovia platform, of which you'd probably see a lot of people already having that ranked up because you have some decent weapons in there. The 7.62, the 5.45, the 74U, there's a lot of weapons in that platform that were meta in Modern Warfare 2 or in even Warzone. So by this time, again, likely a non-issue in that case. Now, the lesser of two possibilities I'd see is that we see a new vault for a new season of weapons. With season one, we saw four weapons in the primary category. We saw the M13B, Bass P, Chimera, as well as Victus XMR. 
three of those four were part of the Bruin Ops platform, but those weapons don't act the same way as other base weapons. You can't unlock the receivers interconnected through all weapons of that platform. Instead, they got to be unlocked individually, one of which through the battle pass, one through DMZ, and one through either DMZ or a weapon challenge. So if that's the way that we see weapons continue on, a vault of all weapon platform receivers and attachments is relatively unlikely, not only because the unlock parameters between skipping the battle pass tiers and unlocking them and then immediately skipping other weapon challenges, but also because we don't see all those weapons rolled out at the same time. Rather, I do think that we'll see retroactive platforms, again, like we talked about, for the more valued platforms per se, the cast off and tactique platforms where you have a weapon vault that can encompass four to five weapons. Honestly, I bet that these vaults for the year at the end will probably be for that M4 already done, the Castovia platform, the Tactique, and the Lockman Mir platforms. So I guess the next question that comes down to all of this is how and when? Well, if the theory of those main platforms check out, one per season might not even be needed. Instead, it could be something like every other season or maybe one a season starting with season two or beyond. But to me, the better question is how? Because almost certainly these will be introduced in the shop, but for how much is the bigger question. The vault edition was skewed and we couldn't really accurately determine how much the weapon vault would be valued at. In our price breakdown pre-launch of stuff in the vault edition, pairing out every single item, trying to see like the value of everything you'd get, we conservatively said that it'd be probably about $30 conservative. Again, that's the low end because you offer more than the traditional bundle. You get, of course, the base unlocks to four to five different weapons and then all of the attachments plus a cosmetic camo design on it. But at the same time, if you go much higher, $40, $50, you start to cut into those prospective buyers because at that point you're paying for almost another game for four to five weapons being completely unlocked in a camo. So $30, I'd say is that lowest, but we've also seen bundles go as high as 50 or 60 in some games with big bundles in the franchise shop. But again, don't know that I'd necessarily expect that. And with the promise of those weapons being unlocked and fully leveled, is that something that factors into that pricing? Or given that it's too late into the year by the time that we'll see one, will it just be a matter of cosmetic approach and the carryover of attachment design regardless of attachment change and the rest is kind of inconsequential? And perhaps the better question is, would any of these even be worthwhile to you at this point? I mean, that big market draw of the M4 vault at the start of the year was, again, the ability to have every weapon attachment and receiver on that platform unlocked without having to rank anything up initially. You had five weapons that you could fully use right out of the gate. You could be level one, not a single minute of playtime, and you'd be able to use all of those. So does that change things now if you have all those attachments, if you have all those weapons ranked up? Personally, with everything ranked up, Orion camo already achieved, I haven't bought a single bundle to my recollection because not a single one has really stood out to me. Having Orion camo, I personally think that looks better than most blueprints, plus Polly's pretty great. I can transfer that with all attachments. So really the only thing I would get out of a weapon vault would be a blueprint with a design and camo that doesn't change regardless of the attachments. And the only way I'd even consider that is if the blueprint for said weapon platform was just incredibly kick-ass. So in all of this, did Infinity Ward and Activision shoot themselves in the foot by not releasing these any earlier? I mean, we did see, of course, multiple weapon platforms in their full capacity already introduced at launch. Those ones we listed, the Castovia platform, the Tactique platform, the Lockman Mir platform, those were all there in their entireties from launch. So did the window for opportunity really just get missed entirely? That's where we're at here at this. A weird conversation for sure, but it's strange to me that we still have not seen anything for an additional vault, despite being this sort of next big thing in cosmetics that it was branded whenever it was first revealed. So let me know your thoughts down below. Are you guys expecting to see more weapon vaults in the future? Would you even be interested in them at all? Personally, again, I don't know that I even would at this point, but let me know your thoughts down below. But if you enjoyed the video, if you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing ring all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and anything COD related. But for now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.